This episode of IBJJF TV is brought to you by Shock Doctor. Hardcore protection, fearless performance. Defense Soap. Defense keeps you on the mat. And Nogi Industries. Since 2003, the real Nogi. You're watching IBJJF TV. Sponsored in part by the International Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Federation and BudoVideos.com. With more than 3,000 competitors registered for action, this year's Pan Jiu Jitsu Championships at UC Irvine enters into the record books as the single largest BJJ event in history. Budo Videos was there playing host to a live four day stream of the tournament, broadcasting each and every match of the record setting competition, a showcase of our new multi mat technology. By Sunday, with the pack of practitioners decidedly pared down, the mats for the finals bid welcome to the elite faces of the sport, some familiar, some fresh. This is the first year in which the IBJJF broke brown and black belts into separate divisions for women. In the light featherweight division, Claudia Martinez Cavenbo from Sequence Jiu Jitsu in the blue gi takes on Sofia Amarante from the Florida based Avengers. Sofia lands a very technical sweep, putting her up 2 to 0, and in the closing moments, Claudia sets up a sweep from the X guard that doesn't work out, giving Sofia side control. Sofia earns the gold medal by points. In our black belt lightweight finals, Gracie Humaitaz, Beatrice Mosquita in the blue gi faces Gracie Bajas, Fabiana Borges. Bia comes from the sleepy surfing town of Saquarema in Brazil, and Sofia hails from the city of Rio de Janeiro. Bia sets the tone with an early sweep, which Fabiana later reverses from the deep half guard to tie things up. Bia later lands a beautiful sweep from open guard that turns into her taking the back and finishing with a textbook collar choke, earning Gracie Humaita's women's team another gold medal in what must be a very full trophy case. Alliance's Luana Alsugir, the middleweight champion of 2011, returns to the finals in 2012 to square off against Vanessa Nascimento of GF Team, wearing the blue gi. This match went the distance and Nascimento was able to avoid being submitted by the prolific champion Al Sugir, which in and of itself is a big accomplishment. Alliance earns another gold medal and middleweight contenders will be on the lookout for Nascimento's tricky inverted guard in the future. Hanette Stack in the blue gi goes up against Valerie Worthington of Alliance Jiu Jitsu in our medium heavy finals. Hanette is one of female Jiu Jitsu's most consistent champions and has been inspiring up and coming women Jiu Jitsu athletes for years. Hanette is able to pass Val's half guard later mounts, and is sinking a collar choke as time runs out. Val survives the attack, but Hanette takes home one more gold medal and an impressive display of patient, technical jiu-jitsu. San Diego's Emily Wetzel in the blue gi opens this match against the most dominant female competitor today, Gabby Garcia, with a rarely seen running guard pull. Gabby quickly returns the momentum by passing Emily's guard and finishes the match in short order with a choke from side mount and continues a long unbeaten streak. In a now familiar sight, Alliance's two female aces defeat all comers and make it to the finals. In 2011 when the situation arose at the Pans, the two decided Luana would bring home the gold medal, but in 2012, it's Gabby's turn. This is your train station your canvas, your metronome, your cable bridge, the steel threads of your past suspending the blueprints of your future. Your courtroom bench, you pass sentences to all those that accept mediocrity. You traverse the road less traveled, every win a friendly hitchhiker, every loss an unwanted stowaway your country. Defend what you have built. The natural ingredients in Defense Soap proven effective against grappling related skin infections. Go to DefenseSoap.com to learn more. Defending Pan's Roosterweight Champion Rafael Freitas returns this year to the finals bringing with him a brand new dance and hopes of stopping the candy powered Cayo Terra from taking away his gold medal. Tara was actually the gold medalist one year ago at light featherweight, the next higher weight division up. Tara led the way in this match with attacks including an armbar and multiple toehold attacks which didn't seem to phase his Gracie Baja opponent. 
Late in the match, Terra senses another opportunity and lands a knee bar to bring home his second gold in as many years. Alliance's Bruno Malfasine, shown here in the white gi, is no stranger to the podium, having won the world championship every year since joining the Alliance team in 2009. In this light featherweight encounter, he faces Guillermo Mendez of Team Atos, named after the Book of Acts in the Bible. Malfasini lands an early single leg takedown and finds himself in the danger zone right inside Mendez's closed guard. Late in the match, Guy is able to threaten with an omoplata submission, but the veteran manages to avoid getting submitted or swept and maintains the lead as time runs out. Chances are, if you watched this event live online, the next day when you went to train, this was the first thing you talked about with your training partners. Over the years, we've seen some razor-close encounters between Rafael Mendez and the Blue Gi and Rubens Cobrinha Charles. Rafa Mendez is the younger brother of Gi Mendez, who we just watched in the light featherweight division and has had regular run-ins with Cobrinha, or Little Cobra, in the finals of various events. Cobrinha had already won the pans four times before this event, certainly making him the favorite. No one doubted Hafa Mendez's ability to give Cobrinha a run for his money, but no one expected the ending we witnessed in Irvine and online. After this beautiful sweep, Hafa manages what was previously considered virtually impossible. Submitting Cobrinha by armbar. We can't wait to see what happens in the next inevitable encounter between these two. Alliance Jiu-Jitsu's success over the past couple of years is due to fighters like Lucas Lepre, shown here in the Blue Gi. The lightweight fighter now lives in Atlanta at Alliance's North American headquarters. Lepre is known for his passing game, but in this match against the lanky Leandro Lowe, he had his hands full. Lowe may be a new name for audiences outside Brazil, but not after this matchup. Lowe's guard is like a maze where every time you think you figured out the puzzle, it turns out you're really still lost. After an early sweep in the match, Lepre isn't able to solve the riddle of Lowe's guard and Lowe ends up winning the match on points. Keep an eye out for Lowe at upcoming events and we'll also see if Lepre has anything new in store for him if they meet again. Jiu-Jitsu enjoys several high-performing sets of brothers like the Hiberos, the Mendez, and the Estimas. Here, Victor Estima in the Blue Gi attempts a variation on a traditional footlock attack that has become a recognizable part of the Estima repertoire. His opponent, Claudio Calasanz, is the returning middleweight pans champion from 2011 and is able to avoid the submission on multiple occasions. Calasanz is able to sweep Estima and earns another gold medal for Atos Jiu Jitsu and nine more points towards their team's total for the weekend. Our finals match in the medium heavyweight division has Gracie Baja's Kyron Gracie in the white gi facing Atos Jiu Jitsu's Vitor Toledo. Toledo looks super aggressive throughout the event, but Kyron manages to turn his half guard into a pass thanks to a crushing cross face that prevented Toledo from working from his side. Later in the match, Toledo turtles and Kyron takes the back and gets the collar choke for the gold medal in under four minutes. Last year, Lucas Leitch fought two weight divisions below heavyweight, but it didn't stop him from winning his way to the finals, where he met newly promoted black belt and checkmat teammate Yuri Simons, who impressed many in his public debut at black belt this weekend. The two teammates decided Lucas Leitch would be the one to take home the gold medal this time. In the super heavyweight division, checkmat's Antonio Carlos Jr. threatens early with an omoplata attempt that almost turns into an arm lock, but Alliance's young but savvy Bernardo Faria escapes. Antonio Carlos, a bronze medalist in the heavyweight division at the 2011 World Championship, later turtles up to avoid giving Bernardo passing points, but Bernardo capitalized by taking Antonio's back. Faria nearly submits Antonio Carlos from the position on several occasions, like this bow and arrow choke, in the match's closing moments, and ends up winning on points. While Marcus Almeida, better known as Bouchesha, and Alexander Trans wearing the blue gi, both carried the same checkmat flag, the two decided that they would compete against each other instead of deciding who would walk away with the gold medal. Trans is a native of Denmark and was recently promoted to black belt and won the ultra heavyweight division of the European Championship in January. 
Boucher's submission attempts and a successful sweep bring him the gold medal here in the ultra heavyweight division. But you can bet Tran's work this weekend will force many larger black belt competitors to study footage of his matches carefully. After a vicious round of rumbling matches in the absolute division the day before, Checkmat teammates Antonio Carlos Jr. in the white gi and Bouchesha decide that Antonio Carlos will bring home the gold medal to his home city of João Pessoa in Paraíba, Brazil. Upcoming IBJJF events include the New York International Open, April 21st, Phoenix International Open, April 28th, Dallas International Open, May 6th, Long Beach Spring International Open on May 12th, the World Jiu-Jitsu Championships, broadcasting live May 31st through June 3rd. For more information on upcoming IBJJF events, please visit ibjjf.org.